My name is J. Oscar McLeod. I was born on a plantation in Burke County, Georgia. I spent the first 16 years of my life there uh, with my parents and my siblings, uh, working in cotton fields, corn fields, peanut fields. And I knew I did not want to spend my life working on a plantation in the hot sun. First, I thought I wanted to be a lawyer. And then when I entered Boggs Academy, which was a Presbyterian operated school in rural Georgia, I was exposed to a different kind of uh, clergy leadership. And I'd grown up initially in my early years in a Baptist tradition. But I was exposed to the Presbyterian Church and to Presbyterian ministers and saw the possibility that that was an opportunity and a place where I could provide leadership and um, set out on that track to uh, prepare myself to become a Presbyterian minister. I was motivated by the community in which I grew up in that the very serious need was trained leadership for small towns and for rural America. It's sort of ironic because I didn't spend, I spent none of my time doing that after I graduated from seminary. Union didn't, didn't give me an ecumenical education per se, but it gave me an ecumenical environment in terms of the students for the theological education that occurred. And the, the National Council of Churches and the World Council of Churches uh, continued that in that it was a context and an opportunity to meet and to work with and to get to know people of various denominations. We as Presbyterians, we may say in our prayers and our preachment and so forth, we are the body of Christ. But the truth is we are only part of the body of Christ. And those bodies help us to realize that there's something much greater, much larger than us and um, it's represented in those larger ecumenical bodies, including the World Communion of Reformed Churches. The early 60s, the mid 60s, um, the Presbyterian, the United Presbyterian Church really evolved a very strong and deep commitment to racial justice. And so there was a deliberate effort to bring African Americans and Hispanics into leadership in the United Presbyterian Church. And um, there was a vacancy in the top leadership at the, the Coma was the Commission on Ecumenical Mission and Relations, which really was the agency that handled our international mission and also our relationships with other churches. I was invited to apply for one of the positions and was selected to be Associate General Secretary and um, worked for two years with Donald Black, who became a very good friend of mine during that time. I was the general secretary who related to both Africa and Latin America, two regions. Staff people of Coma were people who had been missionaries. I was not a missionary. My only uh, overseas experience had been as a student. and. So I came into that job without that kind of background. But Don was wise. Don said, I think it would be great before you actually get sort of introduced to the public if you went on a trip. <laughs> so he, they sent me on a trip to Mexico and to Costa Rica and Guatemala. And one of the interesting things that happened on the trip to uh, Mexico, I went out uh, to the, visit one of the missionaries. The first reaction was, my gosh, an African-American and with a beard. That was his reaction. The second reaction was a question he asked me, which uh, reminded me of how, um, how distant some of the missionaries were from what was going on in American society. He asked me, how did you get the name McLeod? And I used to be a kind of a smart aleck sometimes. You know, okay. So I said to him, if you don't know how I, as an African American, got the name McLeod, you've been out of the United States too long. That was a significant uh, introduction to me, for me, to international mission, and to see actually the situation in which some of these people were working and the challenges that they were facing. 
at that time, the Presbyterian Church in Mexico and Guatemala had some serious issues with our developing relationships with the Roman Catholic Church because in those countries, they felt they were being oppressed by the Roman Catholic Church. And so it was the beginning of this dialogue, of, which we are continuing even to this day, of trying to help partner churches understand that while they are dealing with contextual issues in their culture and society, we are doing the same thing and having to do the same thing here in our own society. Um, the time with Comar really was what made it possible for me to be elected the general director of the program agency. I was encouraged to apply for the position. I was surprised that they selected me, one, because I was not, uh, did not have overseas experience and yet I was going to have responsibility in this agency for missionary personnel and for Christian education. It seems as though I have always ended up where I said I didn't want to be. And I can only say that um, God has had a sense of humor about my life. I never expected to be on the staff of Coma. And from Coma to the program agency, never expected that, really. I had no grandiose idea of being the pastor of some big avenue church any place. And I never wanted to be on the staff of a large church. And yet, that was in many ways uh, the highlight of, of my ministry. So I think I live history by thinking about the present and not, not regretting the past, because I can't change the past, and not uh, being overly confident about what the future is going to bring.